lot of uh, collieries, the, the actual trip that they were doing would be done on one fire. And normally the engines had a massive fire put on at the start of the run. Um, they'd just keep shoveling coal in. Uh, but the engines would steam very well on that, to the, they'd stand it. And of course they were working so hard to be in main valve that the blast on the fire was pulling the air through the fire bed. So even with the thick coal, the thick coal bed on, um, you get the air through that thick coal bed and it would, it would burn really fiercely and they'd get the steam. And it was pretty rare in my experience to see the engines getting short of steam. I witnessed directly what Stephen Oakden is talking about when I visited the Craig Merthyr system in September 1975. They loaded up the firebox on the start of the journey of three miles up to the colliery at Craig Merthyr and never touched it all the way up, although they were pulling quite a large load of wagons. I caught up with the austerity at about seven o'clock in the morning in the loco shed at Pontudillus, where some joker had stuck a learner driver's L plate on the front of the saddle tank. After watering, the engine moved off amongst the coal heaps of the exchange sidings until the crew found a suitable wagon of coal to load up the footplate. Being the only enthusiast around, I managed to catch a trip with them. Coupling up to 13 empty coal wagons, they started loading the firebox with as much coal as they could without it spilling back out onto the floor and never touched it again until they got to the colliery. This is the actual sound recording I made of that trip, with photographs from the line side and in the cab. The railway was the only means of getting coal out from the mine, and with the steep ruling gradient of 1 in 40, the run lasted a little over 10 minutes. Craig Merthyr was a drift mine, so it had none of the conventional headgear usually associated with collieries. It was located at the bottom corner of South Wales, north of Swansea, a big coal mining and steel making area. Finding Pontedillas on Google Map, you can still see where the exchange sidings with British Railways used to be. From there, the line headed north through the town, passing the engine shed and crossing the main street, then turning a right-hand corner and heading up the Dulles Valley to the mine. You can see the mine more clearly on this old map of the area. If you take a look at the right-hand bend out of the town, there you can see a road crossing the railway and I photographed the austerity bringing coal down the valley with a flagman protecting the narrow road. Looking at Google Map and using Street View, you can see what it looks like today with the railway long gone. It's only the house on the left that gives a point of reference to this spot. And here's two more pictures of a similar train coming round the curb, just after that crossing and heading into town. In the town, across the main street, was the engine shed where I started my journey. A rather sad austerity was parked under the shed awnings, out of use for many years, and a source of spare parts for the running ones locked inside. That spot today is a mini roundabout leading into a housing estate. No sign that it was once the start of my steam railway journey. Craig Merthyr opened in 1873 and closed in 1978. It lasted just over 100 years. This film is longer than I originally intended and I'll cover the rest of the promised austerity story in part four. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.